Everybody loves Minecraft, you know? It came out in 2011, eight years later, best-selling game of all time. It's been the most popular game on YouTube for a decade, it's in the Video Game Hall of Fame, it's in the friggin' Smithsonian, all right? To call this game a big deal is an understatement. But all those awards and the stats and the accolades, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Minecraft has gone way beyond that. It's done way cooler stuff. Minecraft, and you know, this is the topic of the video, has literally changed the world. How you ask? Well, <laughs> we're gonna talk about it. Now there are a lot of terrible governments out there, you know? And I don't mean they're like raising your taxes by 2% this year kind of thing. I mean, you criticize them and now you're being assassinated in a Turkish embassy kind of thing. Not fun. And as you can imagine, getting information out in these countries, not easy. That is, until the uncensored library. A Minecraft map designed specifically to get around that uh, pesky little censorship thing. In countries where the governments don't like their citizens being little meanies to them, hurting their feelings. Countries like Mexico, Russia, Vietnam, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, released by Reporters Without Borders, in their own words. In many countries, the internet is controlled by oppressive regimes. The media is censored and websites are blocked, but Minecraft is still accessible. We are using this loophole to bypass internet censorship and make independent information available again. A massive library facilitating banned information and news articles from around the globe that anyone can access as long as they have an internet connection and Minecraft, which in itself isn't always the easiest combination of elements to bring together, but hey, that's besides the point, all right? Minecraft is, as far as I'm aware, the first and only video game to ever be used to facilitate global free speech. The effect that that has had on the world, clearly immeasurable. And, you know, the map is pretty sick too. Look at this thing, 24 people, 250 hours, 12.5 million blocks. That's a big boy right there. But you know, it's one thing for a video game to change the world in terms of access to information. I mean, <laughs> how hard could that be, right? But what about changing the world in a physical sense? In 2012, Mojang started a project in partnership with UN Habitat called Block by Block. The philosophy of this project was simple. All right, get people who don't have any training in architecture or any way of voicing their opinions on the matter involved in the urban planning process of their neighborhoods. Very cool. You know, you're redesigning the parks and the playgrounds and the community centers that these people use. Why not get their opinions on how they want these things to look? Makes sense, you know, but uh, there's never been a super viable way for people to voice their opinions until Minecraft. It's super easy for anybody to build cool things in Minecraft. So people get presented with these pre-built maps of their communities or areas of their communities that are in need of a change or are scheduled for a redesign. And then they get to build their vision, how they think this thing would best serve the community. They get to present it to stakeholders in the community and to the architects in charge of the job. And then elements from the designs get incorporated into the final project. It started in Sweden and it's moved on to different countries in Africa, giving lots of people a voice and a say in how their homes get built. You know, especially people for whom it might have a really big impact, like disabled people or elderly people or children. It also has had the unintended effect of inspiring a lot of people who might not have otherwise been interested in a career path like urban planning. A lot of kids discovered that this was something that they were passionate about through the program, which is really cool. And this isn't the only time that Minecraft has been used like this either. I bet you didn't know there was a full-size one-to-one scale recreation of Denmark in Minecraft. Did ya? In 2014, the Danish geodata agency generated the entire country in Minecraft based off their geodata. Buildings and all, the whole thing. I don't know exactly what that means or how that works, how you generate a Minecraft map off of geodata, but they did it. And similar to how block by block taught a lot of people and you know, especially children about urban planning, this project was meant to teach kids about Denmark and about uh, geographical and topographical data sets topic, which, uh, you know, I know must be absolutely riveting for children. Fascinating entirely. You know, teaching those things through the medium of a video game, I guess they had a little more success, obviously. Generally, the map was used as a resource for kids to learn about their country, though, and its geography. As an aside, the map was raided. It got bombed all to hell, and an American flag was raised. God bless America, 
and God bless the troops. And yes, that did actually happen. Okay, so now we've learned about how Minecraft has affected the freedom of our information landscape, how it's affected the physical world around us and helping to shape the communities we live in, and in part, how it has inspired and educated people on things that they might not have known or considered. But does the rabbit hole go deeper? So we've talked about how some of these things that Minecraft has done has inspired and educated children. But uh, Minecraft is used very specifically for educating kids through Minecraft EDU. Formed in 2011, it introduced Minecraft into schools. It's a specialized version of the game that allows teachers access to control things for their class, as you would imagine a teacher would probably have to do when giving 30 kids freedom to screw around in a video game. But uh, it's actually pretty crazy. It's been used to teach history, English, science, just everything. This guy over here, he built a map where you can learn about different geographical formations by exploring them in real time. Same map, you can fly on over and learn about real world historical landmarks like the Lighthouse of Alexandria or different building and irrigation styles in ancient Rome. This guy designed a massive animal cell for kids to fly around and explore the biology of. Students come together to learn about farming and construction, coding, there's even beekeeping lessons. You know, you can fly around inside a hive and learn about bees and bee things that bees do, like, uh, you know, making honey and you know, whatever, other bee stuff. Possibilities are literally endless, allowing kids to enter into unique educational spaces that give them an entirely different real-time perspective on what they're learning that's honestly way more engaging than just reading out of a textbook or a PowerPoint presentation or something. I mean, Matt, I would have killed for something like this back in the day. We just got stuck trying to secretly tab in and out of RuneScape during CAD class. This probably would have made things way more interesting to learn about. And it's not even touching on arguably the coolest education educational feature in the game. Honestly, probably the coolest feature in the game in general. Probably the coolest feature in any game ever. Yeah, I'll say it. That's a hot take right there, but I'll stand by it. Redstone, a very simple game mechanic with very insane possibilities. For those of you who don't know, redstone acts like a wire through which power can flow. You can send power through the wire with a lever or a pressure plate or any number of other methods. You can power things like pistons or dispensers or sensors that activate when they come in contact with other objects and so on. And there's lots of stuff. There are hours, honestly, of Minecraft tutorials explaining this stuff. So this is just a super, super simple rundown of its most basic functionality, but it essentially works like how electricity works in the real world. Now that's kind of neat, I hear you say. You could probably build cool things like a trapdoor or some lights or something with that. Very cute. And uh, yes, it is very cute. You could build those things or you could also build a literal computer capable of playing Tetris on because what is a computer if not a complicated series of electrical inputs and outputs? And I'm sure there's probably a lot more to it than that, but whatever a computer is composed of, Minecraft Redstone is capable of constructing it. You could build a graphing calculator, a self automated walking house, a machine capable of playing Minecraft itself. Just, you know, think about that for a second. All right, a machine capable of playing Minecraft inside of Minecraft. We are so close to the matrix that black trench coats are gonna be coming back into style any day now. People have been able to take this incredibly simple mechanic and craft some of the most mind boggling inventions that you could ever hope to see realized in a video game. The level of creativity inspired by this function and by this game is astounding. And it seems with every passing year that someone builds something even cooler. There's really no end to it. The game is truly amazing. And you know, besides the standard fare that you may expect of one of the most popular games of all time, sales and awards and conventions, all that stuff I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Minecraft has gone far beyond what I think anybody ever reasonably expected could come from a video game. Facilitating freedom of speech, helping people reshape their communities, revolutionizing education, hosting creations beyond what should really be feasible to create in a video game. Minecraft has changed the world in extraordinary ways and changed innumerable lives in real tangible ways. And that is how Minecraft changed the world. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the video and I uh, hope to see you on the next one. Love ya. Bye bye.